Hey guys, this is Toronto and today we are making a deck around Tiny Bones the Pickpocket, uh, the most adorable little commander, uh, or at least I think that he's going to be a decent commander coming to us with Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So this is an upcoming card, not released yet, therefore the price of it, uh, just kind of ignore that because, you know, $30 is just a, a placeholder price for now, but we're going to go through each of the cards that we've kind of put into the deck. Uh, the deck is based around basically uh, discarding a little bit of mill and then kind of making use of any cards that were discarded or put into the opponent's graveyard. So there's a fair few different things to do with that. Um, you know, I just want to make sure that we can kind of, you know, essentially give Tiny Bones the, the shop. He gets to go, he gets to pick out his trinkets and go uh, build and make whatever he wants. So we've got a lot of kind of stuff to be able to support that. All right. So uh, Tiny Bones, as I said, new card coming with Outlaws of Thunder Junction. He has Death Touch. He only costs one. And then whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you may cast a target non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. Now, before we get into it, make sure you subscribe as well. Uh, you know, we're going to be going all over Thunder Junction and stuff. Um, but basically, you know, because of the way we're going to do it, because we're making people, you know, discard their cards or potentially mill them and stuff, we're going to have the pick of whatever we want whenever he deals that combat damage. Now, because he also has Death Touch, people are less likely to kind of block him. They're more likely to have to use removal on him and stuff. But he only costs one and we're not kind of, you know, relying on him too heavily. So let's go through, first of all, we've got the creatures. We've got, uh, so I'm gonna go through each of the different uh, sections essentially. So I've got the infesting rad roach, which is a new one. It deals combat damage and then they get rad counters, which makes people mill things. And then whenever an opponent mills a non-land card, if uh, rad roach was in their graveyard, in your graveyard, you may return it to your hand. So that's, you know, essentially a little bit of, you know, we can discard him and then we can bring him back anyway when someone mills something. Or, you know, preferably we want to make people get rad counters and then they're just putting stuff into their graveyard. Mastermind Plum, one of the cards from the clue set here. Whenever he attacks, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. If it's an artifact card, then you get to create a treasure. And then whenever you cast a spell, if mana from a treasure was spent to cast it, you get to draw a card and uh, lose one life. However, the part that we want is the part that makes it so that whenever he attacks, you get to disc... Uh, get to exile a card from a graveyard. So we get to stop anyone who's relying on us, you know, milling them out or start or making them discard stuff. We get to kind of make it exile that stuff from them and then potentially create some treasures if we're going to be getting rid of their artifacts. Aklatros, I, I probably butchered that name, but either way, when he attacks, each opponent will discard a card. If for each opponent who can't, we get to draw a card. And then whenever an opponent discards a land, we get to create a bat. And then when he dies, he gets to transform into a land for us. And then we get to transform him back if a pl uh, player has one or few car cards fewer cards in their hand but we just want to make sure it you know we're more discarding people stuff uh i don't want to go through everything but we've got a lot of kind of discard cards like or in our um in our spells and across our creatures here a lot of them are discard this one here whenever an opponent discards a card that player loses two life so some kind of drain stuff in here as well some just discard spells uh whether it's you know instant sorceries uh and then we've got some nice enchantments in here uh so turach is going to make it so that whenever someone discards he gets buffed up and then whenever he enters the battlefield if he was kicked so we can kick him and then force someone to discard stuff bottomless pit whenever someone discard uh, sorry during each player's discard uh, upkeep blah, blah 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 during each player's upkeep they're going to discard something Liliana we can force people to discard stuff uh, and then we can you know make people like kill things off as well with her uh, waste not whenever someone discards a creature we get to create a black zombie and then whenever an opponent discards a land we get to add two black to our mana pool oppression Whenever a player successfully casts a spell, that player chooses and discards a card. And then Necrogen Miss force people to discard as well. So we've got a lot of stuff forcing people to discard stuff. We probably, you know, if we wanted to go with some upgrades and stuff like that for it, Recursion would be one of them. But I'll talk a little bit about uh, a card here in a second. Um, 
Sir Conrad, Drain, and then Blood Chief Ascension, Drain as well. Blood Chief's a little bit more on the expensive side, but I think it's worth it. Like, the money that we'll spend on that is definitely worth it. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of draw stuff in here that's also discarding stuff. Bag of Holding is amazing because whenever we discard something, we're going to exile it under it. Then we can pay for, get all those cards back, right? So we're, anything we discard, then we can hold it in our bag of holding for a while there. Uh, as I said, a whole bunch of different draw stuff. Uh, force each other player to discard a card, and then we get to draw cards based on that. And then we've got Tiny Bones. We've, so we've got the other version of Tiny Bones here. So we could technically, like, if we wanted to, switch the commanders around and stuff if we wanted to. I wanted to make it around, you know, Tiny Bones Shopping Spree, but the Tiny Bones Trinket Thief will work just as well, where... At the beginning of each end step, if an opponent discarded a card, we get to draw a card and then lose one uh, life. So, you know, this is extra card draw in here. Uh, we've got this one here. Now, the reason I've got Long Goodbye in here is because it can't be counted. That means it bypasses Ward. It's actually really decent. Uh, land. I went really cheap on the land. Main one we've got in here is Bodjaka to make it so we can exile someone's graveyard uh, in case someone's, you know, else is playing around the graveyard or something like that. Um, over here, life gain, it, whenever someone discards, we gain life. We've got some mill stuff in here too, because, you know, milling kind of helps us get to our game plan, uh, and our win condition here, uh, which is, you know, just take all everyone's stuff, <laughs> some protection for tiny bones. So that way tiny bones can get through as well as, you know, stay alive and not get hit by stuff. The reason I've got that Fire Shrieker in here is to give Double Strike. Because of the way Tiny uh, Tiny Bones work is if he's got Double Strike, then we'll technically be able to cast two spells from someone's graveyard. Because it's just whenever he deals combat damage, we'll have two instances of combat damage. So therefore, we're going to be able to cast two spells from it. We've got some ramp in here, Miss Fortune Teller. Whenever um, she enters the battlefield or deals combat damage, exile a uh, target exile a target card from a graveyard if it was a creature we get to create a black rogue token and if it was a land we get to create a, a treasure token just normal kind of rampy stuff in here as well like you know some mana rocks and stuff um we've got uh up here some recursion so we've got geth to be able to bring stuff back x plus black to put target artifact or creature with mana value X from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. Then that player mills X. So essentially similar to what tiny bones does allows us to steal opponent stuff that they've put into their graveyard. We've got to pay a bit for it. Um, well, essentially you're just paying X plus a black and you know, you're just playing, paying black for it. He also has intimidate, which is really, really nice. Uh, and then we've got rise of the dark realm. So this is like our big finisher, right? So our idea here is to keep, you know, forcing people to discard, 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 discard. We're stealing stuff every once in a while with Tony, Tiny Bones. Tiny Bones kind of building it up. We're draining people out with Blood Chief, Conrad, Sangromancer, etc. Uh, and then finally we go, boom, Rise of the Dark Realms, bring everything back from everyone's graveyards that they've discarded over the course of the field. And then all of a sudden we've got this huge, huge, <laughs> amount of creatures uh, entering the battlefield and then get to just swing out to win. It's our big kind of finisher here. Big finisher. Um, I am, I'm really excited to actually play this. Uh, as for removal, I've put in, you know, some singular, remo singular removal. Urbog will allow us to discard, st uh, exile stuff from people's graveyards as well. And then he also gets a whole bunch of stuff based on that. Feed the Swarm for some single target, Plague Crafter to force people to sack stuff, Defile as a uh, single target, go for the single target. Avatar of Woe is a nice single target because it's got like, you know, we're hoping that we've got a lot of people's stuff in their graveyards. We play it, it only costs two black then, tap and then destroy a target creature. That's really, really nice. And then Toxic Deluge as a big kind of board wipe that's going to cost us a little bit, but I think it's worth it. And then we, a good thing about a board wipe as well is that we can then follow it up with Rise of the Dark Realms, bring all that stuff back under our control. And then finally, we've got Rankle's Prank over here, which makes it so that everyone discards stuff or loses life or sacrifices creatures. So we can do some really, really interesting stuff with that. So as I said, the game plan here is mostly to just force people to discard stuff, mill some stuff while we're at it too, 
get tiny bones and geth to slowly steal stuff away chuck it up on the board and then all of a sudden we chuck out rise of the dark realms for a big kind of finisher that would be the kind of thing that i would like if we had you know some more money in the in the coffers here we'd go we'd add like some a tutor to be able to get rise of the dark realms out or a couple tutors in there as well um you know some stuff to be able to probably another board wipe as well but i think i'm okay with just having the toxic deluge there because we're hoping to have our board built up more but some um some asymmetric Metric kind of board white wouldn't be a bad idea either though that's you know less likely in black um all i can think about so far is like some complete board wipes um we've got a lot of stuff in here that's going to be just really nice um to kind of like you know slowly kind of ramp us up over here and just slowly punish people for discarding stuff and then make them all discard stuff hopefully they have you know they have to get rid of their good stuff in their hands and then we can just come in with tiny bones and just steal it away um, but I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think? I'm going to put the link to this down in the description. So that way you guys can check it out. Let me know what you would add, what you would take away, what you think I've, you know, overspent on or anything like that. I hope you guys had a wonderful day and goodbye.